All right, hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Pathfinder Kingmaker. Uh, it might be a bit choppy on the menu. To that, I apologize, but that's fine. Anyway, uh, so this is a this is the CRPG based off the Pathfinder system, with like Chris Avalon and um, Enon Zer and a bunch of other uh, fairly big names and things. And uh, I like I I like CRPGs. I grew up with them, and I have a lot of fun with them. They tend to run a little long though, so it's always a little bit tougher. Anyway. Uh, let's take a look at difficulty. So we've got normal mode. Actually, it looks like we got a custom mode that I can mess with. Damage you suffer from enemies and traps is reduced by 20%. Enemies inflict reduced damage on critical hits. Your character will not die after su suffering deadly injury for the first time. Instead, they'll be afflicted by the death store condition. If a character with this condition suffers a deadly injury, then they'll die. Resting in a comfortable and safe place such as Oleg's trading post removes death store condition. Character can still die from instant death effects, energy drain, poison, or similar conditions. If your main character dies, game's over. If a companion dies, you can resurrect them with Raise Dead or a similar spell. An extremely expensive service, unavailable in most adventurers. Gotcha. That's normal mode. So, auto level off? Yeah, that's off. Somewhat easier enemies? I don't know. Remove negative effects on rest. Dead companions rise after combat. What else do we have? Only active companions receive... Exp oh, that's dumb. Yeah, let's, uh, if you enable this option, only the character who rolls the ability to check will gain experience. Nah, I want that across the board. Immersive mode. Interface hints, no. What's this one? Only one save slot is available. Oh, it's Iron, Mo Iron Man mode. Okay, sort of. Party speed depends on what you're carrying. No. Kingdom management. Auto mode? No, that's fine. Honestly, I'm probably just going to leave it on normal mode. Uh, keep it on death's door. I like the idea of dead companions rise after combat. I kind of want to turn it on. It probably won't be a problem, but it's really tempting to put uh, turn it on nonetheless. Because that more or less means we could just face roll through a lot of this stuff. Let's turn on revivals. This is probably not going to make people happy, but I don't want to have to drag people back just to revive them. That sounds more like more work than it's worth. And I'm going to be totally honest, when I DM these games, I let my party just pick themselves back up off the ground even if they got totally pasted. Deaths are generally reserved for when like something important has happened and it's like heroic sacrifice or heroically stupid. Anyway, let's create a new character. I'm not going to be Hedrig, Maluku, Vylian, Gimart. Nah, let's make somebody new. So what do we want to be? I don't even know. I like this guy. Never mind, I don't like this guy anymore. I like this gal. Holy crap, she looks cool. <laughs> she looks like she bites faces. And other bits. But this guy? What? Her? What? Sneaksy the, the orc? What? Chell, what are you doing? Why? I Okay, let's look at all the portraits. Go away. I like her. What the? The face is a bit... I really like her. This portrait is great. Uh... Spell knife. Vampire lady. Monk. Druid. Probably multitudes of rangers. It's cleric. There's just something about uh, some of these halfling faces that are confusing. And mildly upsetting. Problem is, I want to pick my class before I pick my portrait. I usually prefer to make the character before I ever pick what they look like. I really want to go with this orc chick. I almost never bother with uh, female characters, but like, her portrait is such a wild standout. Otherwise, we could look into being like a crazy gnome or something. I, I don't know. We could call him Zappy the Gnome. I mean, I liked Flubs, actually, earlier. Oh, I like that. We're going with that. Is that it? Are we good? What am I missing? Oh, choose a voice. I did. All I see is blackness. There we go. We got Kelgritz the Mad. So Armag, an ancient chieftain of the Numerian Barbarians, was chosen of Gorum, the merciless god of war. Legends say that no one was able to defeat Armag in battle until Phasma, the god of death, sent her servants to kill him. 
enraging his patron. Oh, that has nothing to do with what we're Our currently doing. Our story started at the mansion of an Aldori swordlord. Drawn by the promise of a most dangerous task and a commensurately huge reward, heroes of all stripes gathered here. Where are they? This is taking forever! It didn't even say what this was for, just that the Aldori were looking for heroes. Who are the Aldori anyway, rich folk? If you can't be patient, no one's keeping you here. Just go back to your mountains or whatever hole you crawled out of. The Aldori Sword Lords run the premier school for the dueling arts. They're also the richest and most influential group in this part of Brevoy. Take that tone with them, and they'll teach you some manners pretty quickly. Okay, the Aldori Sword Lords. Arose when famed swordsman Baron Syrian Aldori agreed to train a select group of pupils in his dueling techniques. They ruled Rosslyn for generations, each as prickly and impulsive as the Order's founder. Though they are considered some of the finest sword fighters in the Inner Sea region, they are also obsessed with personal standing with more or also obsessed with personal standing and honor. Okay, there we go. Bravoy is a relatively young nation, having only existed since 4499. AR. The history of Brevoy before this time is the history of two often warring nations, Isia and Rosland. The coming of the Coral Conqueror changed all this. After securing the defeat and surrender of the two nations, Coral christened his family House Rug Rugarvia. Its rule ended with the mysterious disappearance of every member of House Rugarvia in 4699 AR, leaving Brevoy in a precarious political position. All right, you purple toad, just shut your trap. And if you can't, I'll help you. Hush! Quiet! They're coming. Greetings, everyone. I am Swordlord Jamandi Aldori. And this is Lord Mayor Yosef Salimius of Restov. Welcome to my mansion. Okay, Restov is one of the two largest cities in the fertile region of Rosslyn in southern Bravoy. Lord Mayor Yosef Sele uh, Salemius leads the city, which is a trade and cultural center that borders the River Kingdoms, the Shrike River, and the Stolen Lands. As the birthplace of the Eldori dueling style, the city boasts several Eldorian Taldan dueling schools which has led to the city being a favorite place for young nobles to practice dueling championships. Most prominent among them is the Eldori Academy, widely regarded as the region's finest war college. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for responding to our call. You may be few, but that's unavoidable. We need only the best of the best for this task. And I see true heroes before me, strong and fearless, exactly what Restoff needs. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, to the point. South of here, just beyond Brevoy's border, lies a region known as the Stolen Lands. This is disputed territory, and while it's long been claimed by nearby states, it's never been truly taken. I won't bore you with the legal technicalities. Suffice to say that anyone with enough courage and power to seize the Stolen Lands and name themselves Baron or Baroness, claiming dominion, well, None of the neighboring states would be able to challenge it. Of course, Restoff would be first to recognize the legitimacy of this new state, as well as the noble title of its founder. Stolen Lands. The Stolen Lands are almost wholly uh, an almost wholly unsettled region in the northern northeastern section of the River Kingdoms, bordering the nation of Bravoy and serving as a buffer between Bravoy and the River Kingdoms. Traditionally the, haunt of bandi uh, the uh, traditionally, the haunt of bandits and monstrous humanoids, the Stolen Lands are regarded as stolen by all nations along their border, even though none have ever been able to keep these realms under their control for long. Unfortunately, one serious obstacle stands between you and this title. A gang of bandits holds sway in the Stolen Lands. Their chief, who they call the Stag Lord, considers himself the rightful owner of these lands and no one has yet been able to challenge his power. Bring me his head, and you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands as their legal ruler. Any questions? Sorry. 
get my brace on. Okay. Any questions? There's a whole team of us. Who exactly will receive the Baron's title? I will, of course. I'm the leader of this team, after all. Don't worry, though. I'll make it worth your while to help me. I will shank the shit out of you. We haven't yet begun, and you already speak of divvying rewards. What makes you think we'll even succeed? There's little point arguing over who gains the title when we'll most likely lose our lives there. <clears throat> if I may please answer the question. She takes a long pause, waiting for the voices to die down as everyone directs their attention towards her. We believe you're all equally deserving of a noble title. Over the course of your expedition, it will be up to you as a team to decide which of you is best suited to rule. Why not just recognize the Stag Lord as Baron? That's a good point. As I see it, this Stag Lord already holds power over the region with confidence. Many noble bloodlines were started by bandits who just got lucky, weren't they? Perhaps because we do have standards to maintain. This room has seen many celebrations of adventurers, and even those who just got lucky. But giving a noble title to a bandit lord? <laughs> that's one thing that's never happened here. And it won't, while I still breathe. You're helping us found a barony. What do you gain from such generosity? Oh, there we go. Don't ask stupid questions. Why should you even care? What they have to gain and why, that's for Lady Aldori and I to discuss. It's none of your concern. Your only concern is to swing your sword around or whatever it is you do. I am throwing this gnome out the window. I don't care if I have to hire goons for it. Of course we stand to benefit from this enterprise. But if you're concerned that we intend to rule your country from afar, using you as a front, well, please know that these concerns are unfounded. Let's just say that we have a strong interest in the region's stability. We have need of a ruling power we can negotiate with, not bandit gangs and monster hordes. What rewards can we expect exactly? And what reward would you seek beyond a noble title and your own lands? We'll absorb the costs of preparing and equipping your expeditions. Once you return victorious, Restoff will also allocate you a significant sum to provide financial support for you to establish your country. Essentially, we'll help you build your capital. I hope such a reward is satisfactory. Words, words, words. Significant. Financial. I can't fill my belly with pretty words. I get the feeling she's not the leading type. Of course. There will also be an official banquet held in your honor. All of Rostov's high society will gather to celebrate your feat. Now you're talking. That's clear as day. Excellent. You venture forth tomorrow. For now, you can take some time to get to know one another better. Or you can head straight to your guest rooms to get some rest. You'll find we've already prepared supplies for you there. And thank you again for agreeing to take part in this expedition. I wish you luck. Thank you again, with all my heart, for replying to this call. The flare in your eyes reveals your courage. The unshakable will that distinguishes true heroes. I look at you, O oh champions of Restoff, and doubt not for a second that you'll be victorious. So venture forth toward your feet. Go! and return in triumph. Hi, my name's Lindsay. I'm a bard, though this is my first real adventure. So, shall we go teach this stag lord a lesson? I'm Kelgritz the Mad. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Actually, I also wanted to ask you something. How do you feel about this Tartuccio fellow? I think he's pretty obnoxious, personally. He appointed himself head of the team, and he's just after the Baron's crown, or whatever it is Baron's wear. It doesn't matter. I don't like him. I think you should be team leader. When I first saw you, I couldn't help but think, now here's a real hero. Someone who'll be praised in poems and songs. This... This is the person I'll write my book about. For starters, I think you need glasses. For secondaries, you want to help me throw Tartuccio out of the window? He looks, he looks throwable. Uh, well, 
Read a book? Damn, I should have led with that. Please, just let me explain. Oh, okay, not fully voice acted, whatever. You know what trouble with most bi hero's biographies is? They're always written years later, based on the tales of, best case, people who saw things from outside. Worst case, someone who heard about it from their brother, who heard about it from their friend, who heard about it from their cousin, and so on. Adding a new batch of lies every time. Every time I re read about a heroic journey, I think to myself, why didn't they just bring a bard along with them to write it all down properly? And then I thought, I could be that bard. I just needed to find a suitable hero and volunteer to follow along on their glorious adventure. A great plan, huh? And here we are, with a heroic journey lying before us. Who's going to be the hero? Some dwarf who keeps muttering about how we'll all die? Or maybe that horrific scythe lady? Or gods forbid, Tartuccio? No way. Not a bad plan. It's settled then. I'll accomplish the feats and you write them down. Deal. All right. I'm going to my room to write about tonight. See you in the morning. Hey, Dill Whistle. How do you feel about windows? Nope. He doesn't care to talk to me. Well, this is loss. Uh, anybody else to talk to? Probably not. Nope. Well, I guess we're just gonna wander around meaninglessly. Why do I have a crossbow? Do I even know how to use one? I guess so. News to me. We just nicked it. Seriously? No one to talk to? Just kind of tutorials on how to how to control the game? Got gotcha. Wait. Oh. Probably should have paid attention. I might not be able to rotate this. Yep. Is there anything that's nailed not nailed down that I can rob? Uh, ooh, we can look at the table at the very least. Let's work on that. I don't know how much I I might get stuck in this voice for this entire playthrough. It could be a problem. A large map of Bravoin its surroundings dotted with numerous numerous something or others. Cryptic marks and notes. Okay, we might want to change the scroll speed a little bit. It is sluggish. We should probably also change the music a little bit, because it's a little loud. Also... It might not be too loud, I don't know. I'm shocked that there's, uh... Let's go occasionally. I mean, I'm pretty much going to be doing this. Middle mouse button. No, middle mouse button is just, uh, shove the camera around. Right, that was the other thing I was going to do. Uh, is it controls? Screen edge scrolling speed. Let's crank that up to, like, honestly, maybe not double. It's like 75%. Eh, somewhere in there. That should be fine. Uh, right mouse button function. AoE spell snap to the nearest target. Let's see how that goes. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. That's still pretty ponderous. Whatever. I do not like those tutorials. I might just have to turn them off. Just do what you consider right and let others discuss it. You know, not everyone gets a chance to become a baron, so discussing a baron's actions is usually all the unlucky ones can do. Wonder's voice is a bit like the Joker. Yeah, I based it off of, uh, I think I, uh, Help! Help! Uh, I based my, my, my voice that I, I, I use for, um, uh, for Kelgrits and some other things. Mildly off the Joker for, um, Crow from Nefarious. Kind of like the, you know, the, the loud, uh, Mark Hamillian Joker. And honestly, it's one of my favorite voices to do, which is why I try and use it whenever I get the chance. So, anyway. This is a joke. No time for jokes. The mansion's under attack. Some villains broke in and started killing everyone. I barely made it. Hurry, we have to help the guards fight off the attackers or we'll all be cut down one by one. As if to lead credence to Lindsay's words, a scream echoes from the hallway. Okay, pause. We know about these things. I know about all these things. Hello, boot look at liquor. What do we have? I've got some magic. I got a magic missile. Oh. I forgot this is where the cantrips still suck. Fifth edition D and D for the most part isn't the I like Pathfinder better than fifth edition um D and D for the most part, but the cantrips just are boring. 5th edition knew how to make the cantrips at least functional for combat. Instead of 1 die 3, 
And it's probably better that I just shoot him with my crossbow. Oh, he gets an attack of opportunity. That's a pain in the ass. Wait, is this touch of fatigue? Yes. Yeah. This would be a lot easier if I was a melee person. And we completely missed. Okay, this is going to go great magic missile. Yeah, yeah this is the problem with uh, being a caster class in, um, in any CRPG. You... You're kind of expected to perform in the exact same way that a uh, that a melee character does right from the get-go. It's a bit tough. I had trouble with uh, being a caster in Neverwinter Nights. Let's see. It doesn't look like we have anything else around here. Let's see, the assassins are here. Follow me already. Uh, I mean, there's assassins at that door. I'm gonna loot everything first. Are we? Unless it's paused. Nope. Okay. What do we have over here? So what's Kelgritz's uh, uh, backstory? I don't know yet. I'll think on that one. I don't think he came from an asylum. I, I think I think he's kind of one of those people that's more like outrageous than immediately like concerning. They've got someone. We have to help. Oh, it's just that. It's it's just that uh, defenestration target. It's not a big deal. And yeah! unfortunately, a. A mildly wounded sor sorcerer and a bard walk into a hallway, covered in assassins. This is a bad setup for a joke. Uh, days? That's for a round. That doesn't- this doesn't seem like it's worth any effort. Oh! Do spell slots carry over... ...between, uh, fights? They- some of them might recharge. I'll have to take You're a look just at that. In time. A bit longer and I'd have been... Whew, I don't even want to think about it. Can you imagine what a terrible loss this would have been? But it's all right now. I'm safe, sound, and unscathed. Ready to lead you to victory. Lady Jamandi's holding the line in the banquet hall. You know, the one where she had us gathered before. We need to make our way to her. And along the way, we'll try to save some of these dummies who are supposed to accompany us to the Stolen Lands. Speaking of dummies... Take this ring. Quiet now, so that little fool doesn't hear us. She might try to steal it herself. It's magical. It'll protect you. You'll need it while you work to defend me. I don't trust anything he gives me. Could be a mind control ring. Could be anything. I don't need no stinking ring from no stinking gnome. I feel like I'm mildly racist against my own kind. Happens. We're tricksters. Step, step, step. Which is the door out? I don't know. We should rob these. We should probably rob these guys first. Anyway, I should probably also take uh, Fartuccio around, but I really don't want to. Why is it that he's the f second person we get? Why is it just the party of gnomes so far? This is disturbing. This actually hey! feels like a setup for a joke. All right, let's do. Uh... Let's see. He's also. Well, I guess he's got burning hands at the very least. Get out of here. I know how to D&D, &D, kind of. Uh, he, he is quite wounded already. That will serves him right. And there he goes. As expected. I'm writing you out of our sword. Man, cantrips are so garbage. Why can't Wizards of the Coast get off their butts and actually, like, commission a, a decent, uh... Man, we really can't hit anything for shit, can we? This is disconcerting. Well, everybody else can. Health and death. Each character has a certain number of HP. When their HP drops to zero, they lose consciousness. After that, combat's over. Uh, character will get up and be controlled again. Character's HP value can drop into negative numbers. Yeah, we know how, to this, how this works. Is there anything fancy? Healing spells? Nope. Ah, boy, Fartuccio, you, uh... You do not in, uh, instill confidence in me. At all. 
do you mean 4th edition? No, no, no. I mean 5th edition. 5th edition D&D has some really good ideas. Not many. Uh, well, no. It, it didn't really add too much to the, uh, to the mechanics. It just simplified stuff down. But what they did do, uh, that I really liked was, um, cantrips in, in 5th edition scale with your level. Actually, a lot of spells scale with your level, which is kind of nice. Um, but they scale with your level, and they also, uh... Can we actually rest here? We cannot rest here. Yeah, this is why I always get a little bit, uh... Leery of playing as a, a mage character. If it becomes a problem, we'll switch over to, uh... You know, like a dwarven fighter or something like that. I don't know. Boring. Maybe cleric. Seems like going cleric might have been the wise idea to start with. It's the end for you rats! Yeah! Okay, do we still have shield? I have no idea. I'm out of spells though, which kind of sucks. Okay, thank you for repausing the game. What are you doing, Kilgritz? Get back in there. I mean, honestly, oh, she... Has she already killed them all? I have no idea. Oh, the it's you. Stay up from under my feet or I'll strike you down. I think I'm going to stay away from a lot of the uh, narration here. Uh, if there's voice acting, I'll just take that as law and we'll go from there. Blood for Gorum! Because, yeah, we don't really need to say that she runs towards the sound of battle. Barbarians. I think that's exactly how heroes should be. What, stupid, sweaty, and always looking for something to gobble up or lop the head off of? Calistria, save me from such heroes. Calistria, also known as the Savored Sting and uncon Unquenchable Fire, is the goddess of lust and revenge who takes on many faces and guises. She is held especially high regard by elves who often identify with her mercurial moods and changeable nature. A fondness for wasps has earned this vengeful deity the title of Savored S Sting. Such creatures live on after harming their enemies, a trait Calistria's followers hope to emulate when pursuing their goals. I cannot rest here, which is real rough as a spellcaster. As always. There they are, the assassins! This is your last chance. Drop your weapons and we'll spare your lives. So generous. I'm afraid I can't offer you the same courtesy. Hey, you ugly mug. Get him. Well, that's a big man. That big man made a weird sound when you cast that spell. Hot dang. Let's see. Did they have you pick a religion? Nope, not in this game. I never really liked that in D and D, uh, to begin with. The whole like, pick your your character's like favorite god, and it's like, I'm sorry, there's a whole pantheon here. I'm fairly certain I can like, favor multiple gods without like. Okay, so we can't go out the front door, can we? Nope. Well, I guess we're going out this way. I'm confused at what at which point are my inventory will fill up. Passage is blocked, you can't make it through this way. Well, I guess we're going through this door. Okay, skill check. Sometimes interacting with an object requires a skill check. A successful check may be needed for a variety of tasks. Unlocking a door, opening a chest, disabling a trap, moving a heavy object, reading an inscription in an ancient language, etc. Different skills are used for different checks. Multiple characters are selected once the character with the highest skill points will perform the action. Some skill checks, like trap disarming, can be attempted multiple times. Others, like unlocking doors or spotting hidden things, can only be retried after a character raises their skill check skill rank. Some items and spells can give a character a bonus to a skill check, but applying this bonus doesn't give you the chance to retry a failed check. Applause, please. Okay, and she can just get past. Oops. I guess I wanted to read that, but whatever. Yeah! Oops. Well. Everybody yeah, aim for entrails, this one. Please? Three gnomes with crossbows. Hopefully don't die. Burn! Slice! And behead! You know, in retrospect, she might actually have... Uh, oh, she does have cure light wounds. 
She's got to. You're gonna have her use it on yourself? Yes. I guess we'll use it on useless. Yes. Just because chances chances are, uh, well, I mean, he's the meat wall for us. I guess I could have used some of the potions. Okay. So break the door to the army, find some weapons. Or walk in? Okay, we already know about that. Yet. What is this? Big old tower shield. Useless for everyone involved. And we also got a watchkeeper's key. Which lets us maybe get what this. What have we here? This chest is full of gold. I guess it's for the guard's salaries? All things considered. Well, those freeloaders don't seem to have been working too hard for it. Maybe we should pocket it instead. What? No, we're heroes, not thieves. Who said we were stealing it? We'll just take the gold for safety so the assassins don't get it. And then, we can heroically return it to Jamandi when this is all over. See, this is why I usually go with good, because I hate this guy. No distractions. If you haven't forgotten, they're trying to kill us. Finally, a voice of reason. <sighs> Do what you want. I don't care. It was just a suggestion. But there's a lot of money in that chest, and with all these bandits running around, it wouldn't be any better if they stole it. You see, there's two windows over there. Pick one. Left one, righty. Lefty, righty. It's, it's okay. Simple question. Basic boolean. Pick one. Then throw yourself out of it. All right. Each character can carry a limited amount of weight. Uh, let's see. Went to the encumbrance gauge. Under the character's equipment menu. Is it? No, that's the character menu. Uh, inventory, probably? Okay, so we actually are not carrying too much. That's good. What about the big window over on the right? Oh, shared stash. So does... Oh. I see. So the party's common inventory burdens all the members of the group. If you want to move around the world without speed penalties and fatigue, get rid of your excess weight. So were you actually suffering from that, or is that... Oh, oh familiar faces. I hope you're not so frightened as to swing at every shadow. It's me, Jathol. I don't recommend advancing down the hallway, assuming you value your life, of course. There were a few people with me, and you can see what happened to them. And just how did they all end up dead while you don't seem to have a scratch? I'll answer but briefly and just once. Further scares and explanations will wait until we aren't being hunted by a group of assassins. Deal? All right. I'm undead. These traps are deadly to the living, but they're harmless to me. What do you mean, undead? Really? Like zombies or skeletons or...? As I said, further explanations will wait until later. All you need to know right now is that we're on the same side, and we have to fight off a small army of hired assassins. Let's get to it. Okay, you will encounter many traps on your adventures. If your character approaches a trap, they'll automatically make a perception skill check. On success, you'll see a trap's location. Okay, so we know about that. Trickery skill check to disable it. I feel like this is one of those where can I can I quick save? There we go. I can in fact quick I save. I see something. I should take a look at her her character there, sheet cuz we're effectively going to need one Swiss army knife for the party. Uh we're going to want a Swiss army knife. We're going to want a Would you look at that? We're going to want a Swiss army knife. And We're going to want a couple, one or two frontliners. One or two healers? I mean, honestly, I usually like to just roll with like a stupid amount of um, clerics as frontliners. Because they, they are like, they're kind of like, uh, they're kind of like uh, fighters and barbarians, but they come with healing spells. And they're almost as good at like hitting things. Druids, druids are okay too. 
I miss Minsk. People are talking about uh, go for the eyes, boo. I miss go for the eyes, boo. That was great stuff. What are you dallying for? I'm telling you, Tamandi's cash has to be somewhere. Well, hurry it up before stop. Someone's coming. Yeah! Okay, so what is she? Uh, she's probably a magus? Or a spellcaster? Or... What is she? She is neutral evil. And she is... I can't actually immediately tell. Oh, she's an inquisitor. I guess we'll find out what inquisitors do. Her perception is pretty good. Well, we want to go for probably this guy. Never mind, going for this guy. Die! 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 Yeah, wonder it says here it's suffering from heavy encumbrance, which just means we're slower. Which really isn't actually that big of a deal. Okay, so we are out. Do we have a map? Okay, I have a map that I can pull up. And there's some assassins that I have not looted. Now oh, that's a problem. I guess there's a whole bunch of people that I probably haven't lo looted. Yeah, it's like a more offensive version of Cleric. Yeah, it seems like they've got a number of, like, pseudo warlocky hybrid class characters. Oh, did I forget to loot one of these guys in here? But yeah, so... I kind of wish uh, Encumbrance had been uh, something I could turn off at the beginning of the game. I am the biggest pack mule ever, and that's going to slow the series down considerably. Uh, it'll be worth it, obviously, in the long run. What am I missing here? Loot, loot. Oh, maybe I just didn't actually loot these guys? Oh! And yeah, we don't care too much about that. But yeah, I, I don't know. I I love playing games where I can just grab, like, infinite things and just go no, go nuts with it for a while. Uh, you know, not have to worry about running out of equipment, uh, money, so on and so forth. Kind of with that chest, it's like... Oh. Hmm. Probably a clue in the other room. I don't see anything immediately in here. Maybe they have to match. Okay. Are there any visual differences between these characters? Okay. That's why they invented bags of holding. Oh man, I hope we actually get bags of holding in this. That's gonna be like the first thing we go for. It looks like these two guys just alternate. Oh no, they don't. Shall we move? We shall move. Ask. There we go. Got it. We have a secret room filled with loot. I like it how we didn't rob the lockbox earlier, but we were robbing the secret room for all it's got. Should probably take a look at some of these notebooks and stuff, but whatever. Okay. Wand magic missile and a copper ring. How many charges? 11. Problem is, stuff like uh, wands of magic missile, I should probably use them. I almost never do. Okay, uh, so we want to be... Oh, I took damage at some point. Oh, probably early on. So, yeah, I do have, like, the, the Wand of Magic Missile I could probably grab. How much is it worth? 41 gold. Nah, that's, like, that's not worth, that's worth peanuts. Okay, so what's she wearing for armor? She's got chainmail. 
We got a lot of chain mail. We do have a breastplate. Which is just straight up better than chain mail. Okay. I also have hide armor, banded armor, carved urn, nothing terribly fancy. A lot of this stuff, the padded armor, for example, is not actually worth the weight. Let's see, merchant would pay well for it, would it? Yeah, so I guess Tartuccio's present gives... You know what? Why not s stick it on Tartuccio? I don't trust it. I, I, It's probably fine. But he's chaotic evil. It'd be hilarious if it turns out that he gave us like a mind control ring right from the get-go. There's also banded mail. But no, can't give her banded mail. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like I've actually gotten anything even remotely close to useful here. Okay, so nothing immediately over here. Out into the out into the courtyard. So what other buttons do we have with these guys walk? Spellbooks, characters, inventory, menu, sexual characters, formations. Oh, this is important. Do custom formation one. Okay, so I'm going to call this current formation the Battlecock, mainly because that's exactly what it is. Serves you right. Okay, so what do we got? I do have the Wand of Magic Missile. It is worth an amount of money. I might want to consider keeping, uh, holding on to it. Huh. I can demoralize people. Well, I demoralized him, and then we murdered his face. Stuff like that's probably more useful against non-tutorial enemies that can live uh, longer than a hit or two. Uh, let's see. We did not loot these guys. Okay, help the wounded dwarf. What? We have a wounded dwarf? Oh, this guy. Arim. Uh... Grotus. I can sense your silhouette hovering over me. It won't be much longer. Soon we shall meet, O oh Lord of Oblivion. Okay. Aren't you being a bit premature? Look at yourself. You've barely got a scratch. That's impossible. <coughs> oh, it, uh, it seems you might be right. Yeah, it, uh, it seems I will live. I suppose I must postpone meeting my god. Not for long, I'm sure. But while we remain in this transient world, Arim is at your service. I got a dwarf with a death wish. That's a new one. All right, spell conversions can convert their spells spontaneously. Cleric of good alignment doesn't need to prepare healing spells. You can spend almost any... Uh, ah, Mike's rolling into my face. Any prepared spell to cast a cure spell of the same level. In the same way, a cleric of evil alignment doesn't need to... Okay, yeah, gotcha. So first and foremost, let's uh, put the, the... Oh, right. He's just messing. Okay, there we go. So my my previously um, questionable layout, not so bad anymore. So he's also got chain mail. Have some banded mail. Let's see what does it do for his armor class. It's over there, yep, that's a plus. Now he's also got that shield. Can't use a tower shield, that's unfortunate. I should uh, get him the proficiency for that. What about the mace? Uh, cause I think we have the masterwork light mace. That, that's not really that helpful. She got masterwork scythe? No, good enough. All right.
Oh, it doesn't look like there's anything useful. Oh, nope, there is a door that I can open over here. I have no idea which direction I'm supposed to be going, so I'm just going to wander around in the direction that I don't think I'm supposed to be going. Aha! One of your characters has detected a hidden object after rolling... Yeah, gotcha. So anyway, we've got that. They always have a character, one party member with massive, massive perception checks. And persuasion. And probably uh, ways of dealing with traps. Gold ring. And a masterwork longsword, which nobody in the party, I think, can use currently. Okay, what is Wanderer's class? Sorcerer. Uh, blue dragon bloodline. I, I more or less picked the portrait and made the character based on that. <laughs> Uh, I wish they had had more portraits, honestly. And I wish the portraits, uh, that were available, uh, were not the same ones that were, that the NPCs used. Because it just feels kind of weird when that happens. Okay, we've already figured out about formations. I mean, if you've ever played a Baldur's Gate game, this game is going to feel incredibly familiar. For obvious reasons. And that's good, actually. Backwards! Backwards! No. You, run and get an axe. You, bring more water. You, stay here and hold our defense. Those assassins are still around here somewhere. Aha! Some of our guests survived. Good. You need to get to the banquet hall and help Lady Jamandi. I'll go immediately. May Abadar keep you safe. I talked to him, but he just reeks of meaningless NPC. How do we even get there? Where's the... Oh. Is it? Is it through the fire? I hope not. 